Hey everyone, my name is Kajal and welcome to my channel. For today's video, I'm in conversation with Sarah Gibson. She's a senior engineer manager for robotics at Unity Technology. In this interview, we get to hear about her journey and how she got started with robotics. We also get to hear about Unity Technologies and its role in robotics. We also talk about some of the challenges that are faced by the robot industry. Lastly, she gives advice on how to grow your career and how to get started with robotics as a student. I've included all of the timing in the description below. And without further ado, let's get into it. Sarah, can you tell us a little bit about yourself? Sure. So I grew up in Houston, Texas. I did my undergraduate at Baylor University, which is in Texas, and I studied electrical and computer engineering. After I graduated, I didn't really know what I wanted to do with my degree, but I knew that I wanted to go to grad school. And so I went to UCLA, went over to the West Coast, and I studied electrical engineering there. First, I got a master's and then I got a PhD. There, I started focusing on signal processing. Specifically, my degree or my research was about designing low power algorithms and circuits for doing a certain type of neural signal processing called spike sorting, which is where you look at the signal that's recorded in the brain and try to assign each of the action potentials to the neuron that generated that action potential. And so that actually got me my first exposure to machine learning type algorithms because I used a lot of unsupervised machine learning for that. After that is when I went to Qualcomm. That was my first job out of school. And I worked at Qualcomm Research for about five years. I started off on a project that was more about biking neural network, which is actually um, a project where we collaborated with BrainCore, where I know you went on to work. So I know a lot of those people too. After that project is when I started working on the robotics project. There I was working on a project where we developed Snapdragon Flight, which was a board made specially for robotics applications, which used a Snapdragon processor. We developed our own custom flight controller so that it could be used to control drones. We used our own custom machine vision library. And I worked on a team which was called Autonomy, where we actually built the robot application that sits at the very top layer of the stack, which demonstrated autonomous visual navigation running on device in real time on the drone. So that was really my first exposure to robotics at Qualcomm. And it was a really super interesting, rewarding project. Then from there, I went to Microsoft to work on a computer vision product. And I became a software engineering manager there. I was there for about two and a half years. As of the last four months, I've been at Unity as a senior engineering manager on the robotic simulation team. Wow, what an interesting journey. And it's amazing how our paths cross. Like you said, we met at Qualcomm for the robotics project. And after that, you went to Microsoft and I went back to Brain where you have worked before. Right. Yeah. So with that, tell us a little bit more about what's Unity and how it's useful in robotics and AI. Unity is known as a game engine and also as a platform for creating real-time 3D content, mostly for games, but also for any like AR, VR type application. Our mission is we believe the world is a better place with more creators in it. And so we're, our mission is to empower and enable content creators, game creators to put their art, their creations out into the world. For example, a game that you may have played during quarantine is Among Us. That is a Unity game. The top 1,000 mobile games on the Apple App Store and Google Play Store, over 50% of them were made with Unity. But it's not just for games anymore. So it's used in a lot of different industries like architecture, engineering, construction, automotive, manufacturing. And that's because there are so many different applications where you need exactly these pieces that are in a game engine. So for example, I'm on the robotic simulation team. When you think about what you need in a robotic simulator, the two main pieces that you need are the rendering engine, which is generating the 3D content, the graphic, and you need a physics engine for simulating the physics. So like the dynamics of the robot and everything else in the scene. You'll have some forces that are acting on your robot. Given all of the forces in the scene, what is going to be the next, the state of the robot in the next frame? So what is its next position and velocity acceleration given all of these forces? And then the physics engine changes the state of all of the dynamic objects, and then you get new graphics rendered. That pipeline that is useful for gaming is also extremely 
useful for robotic simulation. It's so interesting that how gaming is now actually helping robotics because like you said it's simulation you know computing what that next state is and accordingly not only moving the robot but also changing the environment based on what mm-hmm. action state so yeah that, exactly that's really interesting to know can we also talk a little bit more about what your team does at nity sure yeah my team is relatively new we formed last year you know people have actually been using unity to create their own custom robotic simulators for a number of years because it was not the focus of unity these users were kind of out on their own they're having to write a lot of custom code to get it to work for their application and a lot of people had success with it unity saw this and saw that all of these roboticists and machine learning engineers are having so much success using unity and we thought okay there's an opportunity there how can we make it easier for these users so that we can have more users adopting our platform and having to do less of that custom work if every robotics company who wants to use unity has to build the same custom things, why don't we help them and build that for them to make it easier for them to adopt it and switch from whatever tools they may be using now. For example, last year, last November, we released our first open source packages on GitHub for a ROS Unity integration and a URDF importer. And with the URDF importer, if you have your robot defined in the URDF file format, you can just click a button in the Unity editor and it imports the robot into the scene. It creates the game object for you. The ROS Unity integration packages allow you to interface. If you have some applications written in ROS, that allows you to talk to Unity. So you can send messages on ROS topics and services back and forth between Unity and ROS. We've gotten a lot of great feedback about that. So what we're focusing on this year is more of creating tools that our users are asking for. So for example, we're going to be creating some more visualization tools that will help with debugging. We're going to be looking into supporting ROS2, since that's where the the ROS community is going. And then we're also going to look at supporting other interfaces for roboticists who don't use ROS at all. Wow, that's amazing. It's great to see that Unity saw this change coming in and jumped on. And like you very rightly said, One of the biggest challenges in robotics right now is creating things with ease because a lot of these simulation engines like Unity exist, but there isn't a lot of information on how to use ROS with it or ROS2 now that that's the new thing. So Mm -hmm. my next question to you is, what are some of the challenges you see in the field of robotics? So one super interesting challenge to me is the sim to real gap. People are using simulation more and more and more for training robot applications whether that's training vision model or perception model or training an actual control policy. You want to do that in simulation because it's so much faster and you can generate larger data sets with more variability. It just makes, of course, way more sense to train in simulation faster and also cheaper, yes, and safer. Tons of reasons to do that. But what people have found is, okay, so I can set up the simulation environment and train a model that performs super good and then I put the same model on the robot and it doesn't work. (laughs) So it's like, okay, what do we do now? That's called the sim to real gap. And we are looking at ways where we can help to close that gap. So one example is we have another team in the AI org called the computer vision team. And one of the things they released last year was called the perception package, which allows you to generate really large synthetic data sets, labeled data sets. And you can also use domain randomization to create more variability in the data set so that it will generalize to other types. So that's one technique that we're looking at in robotics as well. You can also use domain randomization on the physics side. For example, if you're training something to grip different types of objects. And also we're looking at, we made a bunch of improvements to the physics engine last year, and we're going to continue to try to get better physics so that it can transfer to the real world more easily. I can totally agree with what you said. I remember the first robotics project I did in my master's was with Gazebo and Ross. And it worked perfectly fine. And the moment I put it on a turtle bot in real life, it it was not driving straight. And I'm like, okay, what's happening? And 
my professor is like you have to think about noise real world is not ideal as you see in simulation mm-hmm. exactly uh, that's another thing that we're um focused on i forgot to mention for for this year is so like one really really crucial part of simulating robots is being able to simulate the sensors accurately because you cannot assume that you have these perfect rgb images or perfect depth images with no noise and no calibration <laughs> error because that is definitely not what's going to happen in the real world so we want to release sensors sensor package so that you can simulate commonly used sensors with actually accurate noise models and that will help you get better training and better testing. Wow, that is so amazing and so true because I know in my work so many times I have spent a significant amount of time just trying to reduce the noise I get from the sensor data. Mhm. Yep. <laughs> so with that now let's talk about what's growing and how you see the field of robotics growing and what the new what the future will look like. Mhm. I think robotics is definitely still a growing field. There's just so many open problems that are not solved. And so I think we are a really long way away from, you know, robots being everywhere in every home, you know, taking over the world because that's p- people underestimate how difficult that is. One goal of robotics now is full autonomy. What I mean is, you know, as we were talking about, you can't really program a robot and test it just in your lab environment and then expect that when you deploy it to the real world it's going to still work that just doesn't happen it has you know it'll experience different situations it's never encountered before different stimulus different noise things will be bumped out of calibration there's just like so many different problems that you'll have in the world because of that i think a lot of the field is shifting from some of the more classical methods into the more learning based methods because in order to have an autonomous robot it needs to be able to make decisions on its own and that decision making part i i call that autonomy is it's really necessary for it to be able to respond in a sensible way to new stimulus or new situation as far as industries i think you know like you're going to end up seeing more and more in the home like we have our our robot vacuum cleaners um there's robot lawn mowers i hear i've read a lot of papers about how in japan which you know there's a ton of really cool robotics research coming out of japan they also have an aging population and they're looking at how they can use robotics in the home to help out with the aging population there's definitely going to be continue to be more robotics used in medical situations like in surgeries and that kind of thing one of the more interesting or exciting use cases i think is autonomous driving which i still think is pretty far away from being completely autonomous on the other hand i'm really impressed with the autonomous driving companies about how far they've gotten they're really solving all of these hard problems autonomy and sensors and testing and testing and simulation all of that stuff yeah very true like you said you know these are not easy problems they're difficult and it is going to take us a while to get there robotics is definitely a growing field what is the advice that you would give to people who are starting in this field or someone who's right at the start of their career how can they grow or how can they build a career in robotics well the first thing i would say is robotic systems are very very complex and they involve so many different types of expertise there's a lot of different ways to get involved in robotics i have an en- electrical engineering background most of people i work with have a computer science background some people have specific machine learning background there's the whole mechanical engineering engineering side of robotic there's a lot of different ways to get involved really the the best advice i have is to just jump in and get your hands dirty as quickly as possible start building things look at the open source community like ross and gazebo are a great way to start especially if you're a student or if you're new to robotics to learn basic concepts and start doing hands on projects another thing i would say is i mean this applies to robotics but kind of generally ask a lot of questions and don't be afraid there's so many people that are needed to make a robotics system and everyone has different expertise and you have something valuable to add so don't be afraid to ask the other people who have a different kind of expertise from you questions so that you can learn from them and they can learn from you so just like never stop asking questions yeah that is great advice you know be curious don't be afraid to ask questions and be judged because you're just bringing a different set of expertise and value and like mm-hmm. you said get your hands dirty be it ross and gazebo vbots or even unity 
or even hardwares like Arduino and Raspberry Pi. Start building things because that is the best way to learn. <laughs> yeah, you'll as soon as you start building things, you'll understand where the the problems, the pain points, and challenges are in robotics. Yeah, very true. Once again, thank you so much for taking the time to speak with. I'm sure people will watch this and be inspired by your story as well as get to know a little bit more about robotics. You're welcome. Thank you for inviting me. Thank you.